Yo, what's good guys? I'm going to be showing you guys what I've been up to on stream, um, what I've been cooking. I have absolutely made so many subs from this, and I think a good percentage of my audience can benefit from it, um, and a smaller percent of my audience can benefit a ton from it, and it can revolutionize your team heading into the next season. Um, and as always, if you have seen multiple of the channel's videos and you do enjoy the content, I would urge you to subscribe. And if you do enjoy this video, if this was helpful, feel free to like and comment. Um, so let's get into it. What I am talking about, what I am alluding to, is the Moonshot event. I know a lot of people do not like Moonshot, um, but I kind of do because I do feel like there is a skill gap and there isn't a skill gap to it. There, the skill gap is how you assemble your team and how smart you are. Um, and then, you know, the non-skill gap is the fact that it's on All-Star and it's bronze pitchers and your timing window is that big. Um, but in general, right, let's go through the rewards uh, that Lightning Sound's going to play, unfortunately, for a while. Um, so I'm going to talk, and I'm going to talk a lot and pretty loud to try to drown it out as much as I can. Um, so Glaber, he's like 30K. Uh, you get this Rewind Pack, that's at least 10K if you don't want to keep the card. Um, you get this Moncada, he's like 70K right now. You get this pack, which gives you a decent chance of hitting on the headliner. You get this pack that I believe is at least 15k right now, has the upside of being like 60k. Um, and then you get this pack, which if you want to count these cards in value, um, is immense, right? Obviously, you cannot sell this pack, but if you just want to count the non-sell as that value, um, it's crazy. I would have been over 2 million stuff by now at that point. Um, and basically what you're doing is you're hopping in Moonshot. And you're giving it your best shot. And if your best shot is able to get you 12 wins, that is 250 to 220K. Um, that Springer uh, sells on the market for that. People want to knock out the program. I would urge you guys to sell all of these cards. Do not waste your time locking them into that program. I don't think the program's worth it. And eventually you can get it done anyway without having to lock in hundreds of thousands of stubs. Um, basically... I'd say probably 10% of my audience, if that, can go 12-0 and and BR, but this is kind of opened up even more, right? Um, so, some cool things about the event are you can, structure your pit, you can structure your starting rotation and bullpen in the super sweaty way, which you can't necessarily do in BR. You kind of can, but you kind of can't. Um, also, friendly quits are a thing in this game. Uh, or in events, they are not in BR. You match with who you match with. In events, you can always friendly... Um, and a lot of people want to send friendlies if you are decent. Um, so you always have that going for you. And um, it's Moonshot, right? If you put up a four, five, six, seven, eight run inning, a lot of times people will just quit. Um, depending on how sweaty you are, how much you want to sweat it, you can uh, you can rack up a ton. I think my best, uh, you know, like individual run was like 24 and 1. I got two Springers, and then I did it in a separate stream and got another Springer. Um, it was free light for me. Um, I know some of you guys might struggle a little more than that, um, but, you know, I think it's still worth your time for this other reason. Uh, obviously, it's Moonshot, right? So you're going to be earning a ton of parallel progress. If there are any programs you're missing out on, um, be it the Tops Now programs where they have those, like, XP missions that are, like, a 1,000 for each week. If you're way behind on those... You might not win a lot of games, but you can get a lot of PXP, and you can knock those out faster than if you just played the CPU. Um, what I've been doing is I've been taking cards that I believe will make my roster next season, when the season flips over, um, and I have been getting early parallels on them, starting to use them now instead of waiting until the next season comes out, and they're not paralleled, and they can't play the defense. Um, when I started doing these runs, Griffey was like P2, he was very shaky in center field. There was a ton of balls where I was like, ah, Mickey gets there, uh, and Griffey would still be like four feet away getting the Olay animation. Uh, I feel a lot better about him being P4, and he's close to being super fractured. Um, he should be capable, more than capable, similar to Mickey in center field after that. I've been using McCutcheon. I've been getting some easy parallels on Adley. I super fractured these two boys right here, um, and then Bellinger's been going off in the event. Obviously, it will mess with your average and your numbers and stuff. If you do care about that, I probably would stay clear. And obviously, you can't do pitchers. But you can knock out any program you see here. You can knock out monthlies. You can knock out tops now. You can knock out the moonshot program. You can knock out the number retirement program. It is a great way to rack up stats and rack up 
exp if you need to get some of those programs done you could even do team affinity if you are still slacking on that um so without further ado um i explained why there's insane amount of value in playing this at least for the next couple days when it is here uh, i'm gonna try to get this up early um and do back-to-back -back day uploads because i probably should have got this out earlier to you guys but uh, not being, you know, a well-established content creator. It just didn't kind of click in my head uh, that I should make a video on this. I've just been grinding it on stream. Um, so what I would do is I would load up the God Squad. If you are serious about getting Springer and you're not here for the PXP, I would run your, like, regular ranked lineup um, in here. Maybe alter some things. Uh, if you really want to sweat, go ahead and just put lefties at every position. For me, it doesn't really matter. The level I'm at doesn't matter if I have a righty or a lefty. Um, but if you do like that handedness advantage, know that all the pitchers you will see are right-handed. Um, so if you just want to stack your lineup with switches and lefties, um, that's your prerogative. You can go ahead and do that. You can see I am super sweating this. I have Ripken. He gives better contact, should give you better uh, timing windows, should let you hit more perfect perfects. Um, like, yeah, if you really want to sweat the event like that, you can sweat the event like that. Uh, I've run into a lot of people. Whenever I see somebody running the Ripken boost, I know they're probably sweating also. It's going to be a hell game. Um, that's just kind of how it goes. This is where the skill gap is in this event for the most part. Obviously, if you can rattle off 10 perfect, perfect home runs in a row, um, that's great. That is skill gap by definition. But here, um, there is like a knowledge gap, right? If you are using the right players, that can help you also. You can see Soroka, not a great ERA for me, but it's Moonshot, right? So everybody's probably going to have a jacked up ERA. Soroka kind of has a glitchy release, has a good pitch mix. Um, I like him a lot. Grayson, Grayson was shut down for me the last few. He's been kind of shaky. His pars are very big, does not actually have outlier, but he does top out a lot. Um, and he does kind of have a funky release, which is pretty decent. Mize, I'm a little shaky on, doesn't really matter. I just like this pitch mix. Um, yeah, no, he's all right. Uh, Quaido got hit around quite a bit for me, but he has kind of a funky delivery, has a great pitch mix, can throw some people off. Um, and then Ashcraft. Ashcraft is by far the best pitcher I've used in this event. Um, he doesn't do too great against bad players because they just sit on his cutter um, and happen to hit the sinker. But against good players, he was one of the only pitchers that I could consistently jam World Series caliber hitters with. Um, just throwing the cutter, mixing in the sinker, mixing his off speed. Uh, he was very effective for me. Um, some other guys I would start to consider maybe be like Paul Blackburn. He's basically um, the same as Cueto. Uh, Lugo's not bad. Has a very, very long wind-up delivery. Can be useful, but after he gets in the stretch, he's BP. And he's a primary curveball pitcher. Uh, not really what you love to see. A lot of people like this Dane Dunning. Uh, Herman Marquez tops out a lot. He's not bad for the event. Um, and then, you know, there's other options. Cutter Crawford's probably not a bad pick. Has a good pitch mix, at least. Um, I'm sure there might be some other ones you could sweat. Um, Servino's probably not the absolute worst. He probably looks pretty good. Pineda's got kind of a weird release thing going. Um, and that's all I'm going to get into. There might be some sweatier picks. Uh, Carrasco wasn't bad when I saw him. Um, the bullpen's where you really want to focus. Uh, Miguel Castro is very one-dimensional. I'm not a fan of him if there is somebody you prefer in the bullpen. A lot of people like Bruce Dar. I light this card up every time I see him in this event, so I don't know if you want to go for him, uh, but he is not a terrible choice. Uh, him and Miggy Castro are pretty much just as volatile. Uh, Miguel Castro has a very like wide um, release he has a weird arm slot. He throws an outlier sinker, I think. Yeah, um, but he's just very one-dimensional. Sir Anthony, very solid. You can see a 12 ERA is not bad in this event. Uh, Luis Garcia should be pretty good. He has an outlier fastball and a splitter. Um, I think I just didn't really bring him in in the right situations or I didn't pitch that great with him when I did. Uh, Loizaga, in theory, is okay. I think a lot of people have seen him at this point. Um, this is my MVP. This is one of the only other pitchers other than Ashcraft that could come in and get consistent outs for me. One of the only bronze pitchers with an outlier fastball that consistently tops out 101, 102. Throws a splitter, throws a slider. Um, very, very sneaky pick. I liked Carlos a lot. He pitched great for me. Uh, Jimmy Hargett, 
it, you know, kind of like a Tyler Rogers type guy, throws sidearm, throws underarm, whatever you want to call it. Um, he was okay. Uh, he's kind of BP, but kind of weird at the same time. It just depends on who you match with. Uh, Whitlock was very solid for me. Uh, throws a deceptively fast sinker, has a circle change, has a slider. Jimmy Cordero was okay for me when I brought him in. Um, really, you know, keep in mind, all of these pitchers are going to get touched up for you, for sure, um, without a doubt. Um, but, you know, it's who gets touched up the least, who has the better pitches, who can force rollovers, who can force pop-ups, who can actually get swings and miss on All-Star, which is a pretty hard thing to do. Um, Bruzar's not terrible at it, but doesn't really have the speed differentials, and his stuff doesn't move that much. Giles would not be a bad shout, right? Yes, he is a two-pitch pitcher, um, but he has a very funky release. He messes with me so much that 90 overall, like um, incognito one, whatever you want to call it, um, that one was crazy. He used to tear me up. Just a really weird release. The ball glitches out of his hands. Uh, a lot can be said for Barlow in that regard. Obviously, he has very good through nines, and he releases the ball pretty high, um, which is not bad. This is a very popular reliever in here. Um, Holderman, obviously playing up today, so he's a fantastic pick. But he also has very good pitches. Um, does not have outlier, but he will top out pretty consistently. And he has that speed differential that you want between like a sinker, four seam, and a cutter. Uh, the cutter is a lot slower. People are going to read the four seam. They're going to pull it um, and hopefully not pull it very hard. Um Iniel Dos Santos um, is okay. He throws kind of hard, throws like with kind of a funky delivery. He's like a budget, um, not even a budget, right? Just a worse version of Miggy. Um, Fulmer's probably not bad, has a five-pitch mix, probably not the worst. Rosenthal, I think, was okay. I had him in my first run. He was all right. Does not have outlier, but he does top out pretty consistently. Um, JT Chartagua is kind of a popular one for some reason. I'm not sure why. Um, Jose Leclerc, I think was all right for me. Um, probably I would stay clear of him though. Um, Cisnero might be all right. He's not bad. If he was playing up, I would like him a lot more. Uh, Gregory Santos obviously has that monthly card, has a funky windup, and has outlier sinker. I would get him in the bullpen, even though he is playing down so much today. Um, I think he's a must-have. Uh, you can see I didn't even sweat that much. I grabbed people I thought was decent. Um, I did not sweat it to the max. Yumi Garcia is probably not bad. Yeah, five-pitch mix. Um, again, if he wasn't playing down today, he'd be even better. Uh, Dre Jameson's probably not bad. Um... Nelson Lamette, I thought would be okay, but he's actually terrible. Um, who else would be decent? Erasmo throws a five-pitch mix. If you play BR, you know that his like silver card is insane. Um, so this one should play decently on those all-star. Has those speed differentials to kind of get you out, to kind of get you weak contact, which is really all you can ask for. Uh, Joe Kelly obviously has outlier. Uh, probably would steer clear of him in general, though. Uh, Michael Givens always has kind of a weird release. He's just kind of lost a lot of his velocity that used to make him good. Uh, Hicks, probably not terrible, right? Outlier sinker, uh, still throws a slider and a circle change. He's probably a good shout. There's a lot of decent options. Just make sure you're having some of these in your pen. Uh, you don't have to have them all. Uh, you, you probably can't have them all. Um, just kind of experiment, see who you like the most. Uh, I believe Kyle Crick has kind of a weird delivery. And I think we're running out, right? I think common stop at 64. Uh, you can be my guest if you want to use Tyler Rogers. I think he would get rocked. Um, ben Joyce might not be terrible. That was an outlier. But again, two-pitch pitcher. If you need somebody with outlier to get bad players out, he can do that. Um, who else is worth a shout? Lou Trevino. Lou Trevino would probably be very good in this. Has a very funky... Uh, delivery and has decent speed differentials on these great pitches. Has a great pitch mix. Um, he should be pretty good in this event. Um, Sam Coonrod, I'm pretty sure, throws really hard and he has a five pitch mix. And he's playing up today. Uh, he's a good child. Uh, Fujinami throws really hard. Throws really hard. Has a very good pitch mix and he's playing through the roof today. He's good. 
Um, and then I believe that's it. Melanson, kind of weird. Uh, throws kind of slow. Could be a good change of pace guy. Throws a splitter with a cutter and a normal fastball. So uh, Mike could get you some rollovers. But those would be my picks for the pin. That's what I would run. I would run your best lineup um, with maybe some more lefties than you usually would use. Um, I would probably run a captain boost, although it's not necessary by any means. Um, and then this is what I would be looking at for your rotation and bullpen. Um, I think you can have success, right? Maybe not everybody can go 12-0, and but everybody can get that Yohan Moncada and make an easy 100K and rack up some PXP while you're doing it. Um, this expires the 31st at 11 a.m. Pacific time. That would be a lot later in the day for me. Um, but I do think it's worth running up, right? If you haven't gave it a shot, just give it a shot. Uh, give it one, two of your best runs. It doesn't take that long. I think it takes about three hours um, to go get 12 wins in the event. Obviously, that is a little bit of time, and you might have to space it out amongst the remaining days. Um, but I think everybody can at least get the Yohan Moncada, right? Everybody can make 100K. Everybody can finish some program or something they've been working on. Super easy like this. Boost your stats with players. There's really no real downside uh, to playing the event, right? Unless you're really trying to ground ranked right now, which, uh, you know, is its own can of worms. Um, I think this is a great use of your time right now, and I could not recommend it more. Uh, and until next time, guys, peace.